This is going to be a look at how the Ravens' offense was slowed down and the run game was actually, in, in a lot of cases, even shut down by the Panthers' defense in Week 11. I know it's Friday post-Thanksgiving, so it's a little late in terms of this breakdown. Saturday morning is typically when I do my live stream preview for the upcoming game, so we're significantly late here because of the holiday generally. Uh, but this is going to be a look at how the Panthers used Frankie Louvu and other guys played really well, don't get me wrong, to consistently get him at the point of attack. They generally took away, if it was an option play, they were taking away the dive and forcing a keep by Lamar in most cases. But a lot of these concepts weren't reads. They were predetermined because they were like power plays or counter windback plays. And they're just creating a scrape exchange, very similar to what the Tennessee Titans have typically done against the Ravens offense in terms of uh, creating a keep read for Lamar and then just scrape exchanging the inside linebacker on that side. I don't think the Ravens did a fantastic job of countering some of these things. And, and I think they did it very inconsistent in terms of blocking at the point of attack with certain guys. You'll see a couple of reps here out there, I think in this video, that are really well done. One of them is by Ronnie Stanley, who you know, hopefully all indications are it sounds like he's doing quite well. Another one I think was by Tyler Linderbaum, and then a third one by Morgan Moses. Got 14 plays here for you. If you're a Panthers fan, stick around because I'll have some pretty good things to say about the Panthers' defense because they did a hell of a job. Held the Ravens to 119 yards, I think, on 30 carries, something like that, 3.8 per carry maybe. And the Ravens had had like 700 and 785 yards in their previous four games, 195 per game, and were held to 119. So kind of ominous if you're a Ravens fan looking ahead to the Jags defense, it's, which is very physical, young, and fast. And then at some point, we're going to play Denver. So can't count your chickens before they hatch in terms of wins, and certainly not in terms of being able to just physically dominate people when you lose at the point of attack as often as the Ravens did on Sunday. So let's fire up our plays. Frankie Louvu is generally going to be spot shadowed here, going to spend most of the time talking about him, but everything was fitting well for them. So this is the second play of the game, I believe. Maybe it's the first, actually. It's a flood concept to the right side, and Lamar and Mark Andrews are, are con they're connected well when, when we move downfield. So we're talking about Duve running a vertical. Andrews here is going to bring this down towards the sideline. And then once he recognizes he's not open, he's going to pull this back. But let's talk about Levu and what he's doing to try to take away that primary option. First of all, he's not getting out leveraged by Andrews. You can see he jumps to the outside. So he's not getting out leveraged to the sideline. If Andrews is going to run something like this, then Levu is going to let someone else handle it. Turns his back to the quarterback which is I've talked about that many times in terms of a linebacker. And Frankie Louvu is a hybrid. He plays inside linebacker. He plays outside linebacker. Uh, really underrated player, if you ask me. I think he's from Washington State, 26 years old. I, lo I love trying to highlight players like this, even if it's you know obviously not a player for the Ravens. Look, could Lamar take off and try to run the ball? Yeah, he could. But there's times where he's looking for something to develop late. You've got Demarcus Robinson on the drag. Andrews on this route that we know he brings back to the middle of the field. So he's trying to throw the football. And it's just great adaptation by him and Andrews to get a gain of 12. Just trying to highlight LeVu as someone who, who can execute against the pass and at least take away the primary option. Because most of these plays in this game, to be honest with you, is going to be highlighting his play against the run. All right, first drive. It's a first and 10. And I guess this is really just sale. I call it go out. Ricard's going to go in motion and block. Andrews is going to run the out, and I think you're just going to get a go up top by Duvernay. LeVu's going to rush the passer. This ball should be caught by Mark Andrews. I mean, he he recognizes that. He actually turns here in a moment, and you'll see he tells Lamar, like, my bad, my bad. But to me, Frankie LeVu has an impact on this. Again, he turns into an outside linebacker. He turns into an edge guy rushing off the edge, whereas initially he's lined up in a 4-3 look as the Sam, because you have the tight end here and then the fullback Ricard. So he's lined up to the strong side. On the motion, he blitzes off the edge, takes on Drake, and takes on Drake in such a physical manner that Lamar can't really step into this throw. He's got a, and I think he does a nice job throwing this football in a manner that Andrews can catch. To me, that's a ball that Andrews catches eight out of 10 times. You know, if it's off target, it's off target by a foot, maybe. 
And I think Frankie LeVu has an impact there. Third possession is a first and 10 out of 22 personnel. And it's zone lead. Watch how he takes on Mark Andrews on the edge. We'll, we'll run this back a couple of times. When we say lead, what we mean is the fullback is leading for the tailback. The nose tackle, uh, Linderbaum reaches the nose tackle immediately, but the nose tackle rips on the back side. And then Linderbaum's got to try to ride him back this way to keep him from getting involved in the play. He does, but 95 certainly gets penetration. But look at the way that LeVu is, is dealing with Mark Andrews. I think he's only like 235 pounds. There is no expansion by Andrews at all. You can see that Powers and Andrews are almost like back-to-back. -back. There's nowhere for Drake to go unless he wants to bounce it. And in this case, LeVu has outside leverage, and then you've got a corner who could fill late, which is probably why um, Kenyon Drake doesn't bounce it. Nice job by LeVu, and I think he actually gets credit for the tackle. And shows you how explosive that nose tackle number 95 is. All right, third possession again, second and nine. I think this is the very next play. 22 personnel, and he's not going to be involved in the play here, to be honest with you. He's actually going to be taking on Ricard, and like he took on on the pass play to Andrews that Andrews dropped two plays ago, and then how he just took on Andrews in the run scheme a moment ago. I think he did a great job. He does not here. This is an absolute loss for him against Patrick Ricard. He is locked up and can't go anywhere. It's curl wheel. The Ravens ran a lot of wheels against the Panthers. They're, I suspect that we were not trying to actually hit the wheel. In most cases, I suspect we were trying to hit something complementary to it, maybe here. But in this case, you got the wheel that's cleared out this corner, gotten him out of the picture, and we're able to hit the check down to Justice Hill for like six or seven yards on a second and nine. Next possession, fourth possession, first and 10 out of 22 personnel. And look where he's looking at Josh Oliver initially. And then as Ricard motions through, watch how they play this. This is power. This is straight out of the Tennessee Titans playbook against the Raven. Burns did a great job. I'm not highlighting Burns in this video overall. It's not because I don't want to. It's just I only have a certain amount of time in my life to do these things. I've got 24 hours in a day, and this guy I thought was big. Now, Burns and a couple of other DNs, I will talk about them. This is a wrong arm technique, and then they're just going to scrape exchange Levu to the outside. Why can they do that? Well, Ricard generally takes you to the football. The Ravens didn't do enough, you know, boot back the other other way with Lamar off of that action with Ricard. Credit to them, meaning the Panthers. Look at Burns taking on the pulling guard. Levu is scraping outside, and neither Ricard nor the pulling guard takes on Burns, and Levu is unblocked as well. I think it's a pretty poor job by our guys conceptually in terms of taking on a wrong arm technique. Pass play where I feel like Levu um, is at least being somewhat disruptive. The Ravens have run this often. It's a snag smash. Some people just call it smash. Very similar to what we ran on the fourth and one down in the goal line against the Bills to, to try to win the game or take the lead at least. So you got Robinson on the snag, little stop. Oliver, who I think is trying to get to the outside shoulder of this linebacker. Oliver running the, the smash. And then the fullback out into the flats. So watch LeVu here. Let Ricard cross his face or go underneath and then try to get involved in the pass play. In, get in the window of Lamar trying to throw it either to Ricard or the snag. I think Lamar actually even pumps it, pump fakes, but I think he's pump faking more so because he's giving this defender time to get out to the flats so then he can sneak it, sneak the ball in here to Robinson. Just to execute and get a six yard gain there required a lot of ex required a lot of things to go well for us. Fifth possession. This is a power play again. Same concept as the two plays ago that I showed you. Down on the bottom side of the screen where Burns is wrong arming it and Lavu scrapes over the top. Same concept. So we're getting the pulling guard powers. Ricard is supposed to kick out this guy. And for whatever reason, we just didn't do a good job of identifying eventually that he was going to wrong arm, go underneath, and we could we could loop over, loop around, 
you know, to the front side guy because we've actually created a wall. We have a wall. Here's the wall right here. What we need is to be able to block the second level guy. I don't feel like the Ravens adjusted well to this until late. And even then, it wasn't enough for me. But this is something we're going to see again, possibly from the Jags. And they certainly have inside linebackers in Foye Aluikin and Devin Lloyd who can do what Frankie LeVu is doing here. Just scrape over the top. Don't get out leverage. Tackle with the inside shoulder. Force him back to your help. Two-yard gain. He's the only unblocked player at the point of attack there. All right, again, fifth possession. This is flex. Going to be QB counter read. And it is a seven-yard gain by Lamar. This play is not designed to go where it does. When you're an option quarterback, if you misread it, you're taught to follow the dive back. Now, most, when I'm, I'm talking about that, I'm talking about like Navy style, quarterback under center, fullback here, you know, fullback goes downhill, you misread it, then as the quarterback, follow the dive back. Because if you misread it, that means the dive back should have gotten the football and could gain at least four to five yards because that's the premise. So in this case, Lamar should keep the ball and go to this side. Now, I'm not saying to you that Lamar knows Frankie LeVu is blitzing off the edge. I'm not. I'm just saying to you, I have no idea why he follows Justice Hill. Normally, on QB counter read, if the back is on our right and going to the left, then Lamar, if he keeps it, he's going to keep it and follow the pulling lineman over here. I am not sure what's going on here. I don't think Lamar made a mistake. I think he actually adjusted well mid-play, but I don't I don't know if this is a pre-snap thing based on based on how many guys are let me get my correct line drawer. Okay, so you've got the midline here. Maybe Lamar is just reading this end. And based on the number of players that are down here outside of that line, so I say I mean to the to the bottom side of that line, the left side of the offense, the right side of the defense. If you just count them, corners one, strong safety two. Nickel three, the end is the read man four. Technically, this, you know, that D tackle there counts, but which is say, let's just say four. So maybe Lamar is doing some type of count here. I've never seen this before. I'm just speculating in terms of I'm going to read Burns. Now, to me, that should be a give. Based on the way I think I understand this play, and I've, you know, certainly watched it a number of times, we're blocking back on the D tackle 95, who is not a read guy. He's not a read D tackle. He's a penetrator. He's a get up field guy. So in this case, we've pushed, we've blocked back on the D tackle, and him and Burns are together. To me, Lamar, Lamar should give this football, and we should be out here for eight or ten yards at least, with an inside out linebacker chasing, who might make the tackle somewhere between somewhere in this area here, maybe. When you're an option quarterback, if you misread it, you are taught to follow the dive back, and I think that's what Lamar is doing here. I think he recognized that he misread it, and to me that tells you how quick. I hate the word processing when it comes to NFL football players. It's a read, but we'll use it for a second. To me, this tells you how quickly Lamar processes things because he's under. he recognizes, oh, I misread it. I should have given it. Let me follow him. He's well-trained. He's a student of the game, if you ask me, and he's someone who Yes, I messed up. I'm going to go ahead and follow the dive man like I'm told to. When you're a great teacher, great coach, whatever, you have to teach how do you respond to mistakes, and they've done a good job of that with Lamar, if you ask me. All right, Frankie LeVue down here. I think he is on the backside of the Ravens' zone read formation. It's trips to the field with a running back to the field, and then we're running zone back into the boundary. The Ravens have started showing this since like the Tampa Bay game, I believe. And so when I say showing it, what I mean is like running the zone, running the zone, you know, this way with the lineman. And then Lamar reading someone, you know, out here on the edge. In this case, 98 is, he's basically trying to jam Andrews from an inside out position. So Lamar gives it because of the numbers. Look at the numbers we got. One, two, three, four, five versus our six, the ball carrier plus our 5-0 lineman. We only get four yards out of it. We're talking about Frankie LeVu generally. Look at the effort. Getting upfield, running into Burns, and then peeling off, making the tackle with uh, number seven, who I thought played a pretty good game too. 
numbers wise, you know, you could say, you know, coach, we could run to the field because you've got this strong safety in the corner to the backside, three, four, five to the boundary, which is generally what you're going to get in most uh, levels of football. You're going to get on when the ball's on the hash, you're going to get six to the field and five to the boundary. That's why so many of these great run teams now in the NFL and college are running to the boundary. So often trying to take advantage of running away from the nickel defender, away from that sixth defender. Fifth possession again, first and 10, 12 personnel, which is, if you don't know, that's the Ravens 11 personnel, essentially. It's our pass formation. And they're asking Frankie LeVu to be a QB spy versus what becomes empty. It's a quick completion to Mark Andrews on a little sit concept. I'm just showing it to you because I think the Panthers trust Frankie LeVu to execute multiple techniques against the run. He's playing inside linebacker, scrape exchanging with the D end, who's slamming down, taking away the dive on option, and then he's scraping over the top. And then on pass plays like this, they're asking him to be a QB spy against Lamar Jackson. Empty again, kind of gets manipulated a little bit um, on these double slants. We'll run it two or three times so you can see it. It's a completed pass to Demarcus Robinson. Damn near went for a long touchdown. Demarcus Robinson, I should say. LeVu is kind of being manipulated. He's widening up because he's tracking Lamar's eyes. He didn't, he didn't look out at all to the receivers to identify what was happening. Once he read pass, his eyes were on the quarterback the whole time instead of for an instant, let me get my eyes out here, see what's happening with one. And he widens too much, too much width because he's too heavy on the quarterback's eyes. Easy completion for Lamar inside that window that he vacated. A couple of more plays here. Six possession. Another stretch play. Three-yard gain to Drake. He's the backside inside linebacker. Watch the angle of pursuit that he takes. I think Burns is doing a pretty good job against Moses as well right here. Zeitler's got to go get the front side inside linebacker. And in this case, LeVu is the backside inside linebacker out of their nickel look. See him track the back, make the tackle from behind. Still a three-yard gain. The Ravens would like to get more out of their stretch stuff. Particularly when we've got a tight end here and then the fullback, you know, trying to loop and insert and get up to, you know, one of the two linebackers at the second level. In this case, he doesn't get either one of them. LeVu beats him to the punch, and the cutback isn't there. Is this, is this strategy repeatable for NFL defenses? Yeah, in some cases, I think it is. He's a, there's a screen threat up here. The Ravens are actually not trying to run the screen. They're trying to run the screen and go. Again, another wheel. If someone's open, it's, it's Andrews. So we're trying to make it look like the screen to Duve, where our two tight ends are blocking. But again, another wheel by likely, and that does not end up being open. What does, however, end up being open, and LeVu does get credit for the sack here, by the way. What does end up being open is, is Andrews on the fake block and then a little curl here underneath the safety. That would have been open. Uh, that, to me, is the only thing that looks open because, again, we we're not going to throw the screen to Doof. There is no run Complimentary run play to the backside. It's not like this is an RPO where we're, you know, pulling the guard and pulling the tackle. We're not doing that. You can watch the offensive linemen. Look, they're all past setting. So this is not an RPO. This is a fake screen and go with the wheel as the primary option and then Andrews as the second option. And my problem is there's no third option. Not that I see. And it ends up being a sack by LeVu. So credit to the Panthers defense for taking away the first and second option. Well, excuse me, taking away the first option. And likely, I think Andrews is wide open. But don't like the, the play from the Ravens' standpoint because I don't think we had thrown that screen enough to threaten them. It's not like we had thrown the screen and got big yards on it two or three times. And then now we're going to throw the screen and go. Let me know what you think of, of how the Panthers played it. This is a, People have asked me to look at you know, how the Panthers stopped us. I really didn't have a ton of time. I decided to focus on Frankie LeVu because he had uh, 10 tackles in the game. I thought he was a big part of what they did. I did show you like three pass plays where he didn't have as much impact clearly in this game, and I suspect you know, generally he's probably more of a run defender, but I, I don't know that for sure. I don't get to watch all the Panther snaps. I just like the player. From what I saw, and I like how the Panthers were uh, taking away primary options for the Ravens in terms of 
wrong arming with the DNs, making us bounce it, making our guard or fullback log. So go out to the next man. And the Ravens didn't do a good job of that. It's a simple concept. I don't think the Ravens adjusted at all for whatever reason. I'm not sure why on some of those concepts. I thought there was some concepts that were there for the Ravens to take, and we just did not. We did have, I think we got to the 23 three times and didn't get points. I'm, I'm talking about outside of the 13 points that we did score. Or maybe it was the 25. Maybe one time was to the 21, and we ended up not scoring. One time was to the 23, and then I believe one time was to the 25. So three different situations where we're down close, really close to the red zone. I think some people call it the gray zone or something like that. And we didn't get any points on those three drives at all. But credit to the Panthers, Frankie LeVue, those guys, Burns, those guys were disruptive. Those guys attacked within the confines of the scheme and looked pretty damn disciplined to me. You guys let me know uh, whether you're a Ravens fan or pa Panthers fan if you, if you A, enjoy the breakdown. Me picking a specific... I'm going to try to do this every week, to be honest with you, Ravens fans. I'm going to try to pick a player from the opposite team and highlight how they played offensively or defensively in terms of how they combated our scheme or our personnel and either were effective or ineffective. I'm generally going to try to be respectful of those players because I don't get to watch as much film of opposing players as I do of the Ravens, clearly, to be able to encapsulate things as quickly. But I thought Frankie LeVu offered me a, a quite easy uh, path to talk about what they were doing because we've seen this technique before in terms of coming at the Ravens option game or gap schemes with a scrape exchange by the front side D end and inside linebacker. And to me, I thought Frankie LeVu showed a lot of versatility as well, playing some inside linebacker, playing some stand-up um, edge defender, rushing on pass plays, and then also being used as a QB spy and doing a pretty good job on at least two of the pass reps that I showed you. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section.